Welcome, aliens, predators, and colonial marines to the AVP The Hunt Begins tutorial. AVP The Hunt Begins is a skirmish tabletop game for two to three players, where players get to take control of one of their favorite factions from the AVP franchise. I'm going to split this video into two parts. This first part introducing the very basic rules so that you guys can get a general understanding of how to play the game. And then there will be a second video that talks about more in depth what each faction can do uniquely to themselves. Because you see, there are a lot of general rules that all factions will follow. However, there are also a good handful of exclusive rules that only pertain to specific factions. So I won't get into too much detail about how those work. Instead, we'll talk about the game here itself. So right here out of the box, we've got the three factions set up. In the back of the book here, there are a bunch of different scenarios that you can pick from and set up tiles and doors accordingly. So I've done just that. This game is played with cards, models, dice, and these ping tokens. Each faction has a number of these ping tokens, and on the front, it represents the model connected to the card, and on the back is the faction. And these are used to hide the identity of what units you have on the field. This information is private to other players, but of course not private to the player who owns that faction. Each faction will also have a deck of strategy cards. This deck is shuffled at the beginning of the game, and each player will draw five cards from their faction before the game starts. At the start of the round, whoever has initiative will take the first card of the environment deck and flip it face up so that every player can read it and take this in consideration because this effect will be active for the entire round. Each player will have reference cards for each of their units and have them should they ever need it. This game uses D20 to determine each of its roles and we'll talk about how players can use these dice when you need to make specific checks. To determine who goes first, each player will roll one of the dice and whoever gets the highest roll will get to determine who gets initiative. They could take it for themselves or give it to another player. If it's given to another player, for all intents and purposes, that player now has the initiative. So let's say here the predator player has initiative. The predator player will initiate their turn by nominating one of their models to activate. Let's just say for all intents and purposes they will pick this model here in the front. So the predator player activates this model and can perform two actions with that model with no two actions being the same. There are two types of actions. General actions which cost one point and extended actions which cost two points. General actions include moving, shooting, close combat, interact, sentry, and pass. I'll get into detail later about what sentry is, but the others seem self-explanatory. The player here will interact with the door, causing it to be removed from the game. And they can move a number of tiles equal to the value written on their card. Every model in this game can move one tile. So they will simply move forward and that will be that model's activation. Once it's used up all of its actions, the predator player will take an activation token and place it on top of the token just like that. The player will then proceed clockwise and each player will do this until all of their models are activated. So that's simple enough. So let's say here it's now time for the alien player to go. They can nominate any one of their models and move them accordingly. So what are these? These tiles are the vents. These vents can be used by anyone with small bases. If we were to look at the size of the predator player and the alien models, the predators have a larger base and the aliens have small. So these predators unfortunately cannot fit inside the air vents, but the alien player totally can. The only other rule with vents is that you may not end your turn inside of them unless you have the tiny special rule. None of the aliens in the base game have that rule, so at the end of your turn, if you have an alien in the vent, they will get pushed 
back out from whence they came. So the alien player here decides that they want to use an extended action. Remember, extended actions take two action points. And so the action that they choose to do is run. Run allows a model to make its movement with their normal movement value plus one. So the alien here has a movement value of one, plus one is two. So that allows them to get past this vent here. So now we run into a situation where now two ping tokens have line of sight of each other. How can you determine whether or not a ping token has a line of sight to another ping token? The way that the rules are worded is that if you can draw a straight line between the center of your tile to your intended target tile without any blockers, then you have line of sight. In other words, up, down, left, right, diagonals don't count. Doors of course block and you cannot trace line of sight through vents. So here, these two models would have line of sight of each other. Once two models do have line of sight of each other, they both will be revealed to all the players. To do that, you will simply look under the ping token to figure out which ping token this is referring to. So here the predator player reveals the predator warrior with the combi stick. And here, the alien player reveals an alien stalker. And they will replace their ping tokens as follows. There are special rules for models to be able to go back into their ping token, but again, that's extended rules. But for all intents and purposes as well, ping tokens are the same as their respective model. They're just used to hide which models they are to all the other players. Now again, all the factions have special rules when it comes to ping tokens and how they get revealed. I'm gonna skip that and let that go into the extended rules. But for now, that would mean that the alien player has activated their model and turn would keep proceeding forward. Every player will keep activating their models until they've all completely activated. I mentioned before sentry as a basic action. The sentry basic action lets you reserve an action for some point later within the round. So for example here, I could activate this model or this token and say, okay, I am going to perform a sentry action that costs me one action, but I'll get to place a sentry token on my ping token to show that it is now in sentry. What that means is at any point during the rest of the round, during other players' turns, I could possibly interrupt a model's activation in order to perform the action that I saved up by using that sentry action. They can only ever do one action. It is possible for models to get more actions through their turn, but a sentry action can only reserve one action. So if you got three actions at the start of your turn, you would perform one, perform your sentry, and then perform another action. And remember, you can only perform each action once. So if you were to shoot sentry, you could not shoot again. The only actions that you can take as your sentry action are shooting, close combat, and move. So these sentry actions can be used in between the activation and the actions of enemy models. So let's say we went around the entire table and everybody's activated great. And now it starts a new round of activations. And in the first round, the Predator player did the sentry action. Great. So that means now the alien player gets to go and they want to activate this model. Okay. So they activate it. They perform an action. They want to get in here and attack the Predator. Cool. He performs the move action. And it is at that point, before he performs his next action, that the Predator player can say, Stop. I'm doing my sentry. And I'm going to have this token shoot. But of course, after it moved into here, you would reveal which models come into play because line of sight. So they would get to perform their action to its resolution and then they would be back to the alien player if of course that model did not die in the process. If by the end of the round, you still have models that have sentry tokens, the players will go by initiative order 
and perform their final actions or choose not to. But if you don't use it, you will lose it at the end of the round. So let's talk about combat. On each card here, you'll see that there's a lot of information from the skill checks on the side, the weapons here in the middle, and on the back, there's a lot of different information pertinent to this specific card. So of course, when you want to attack somebody, you need to be within line of sight. If you're doing a melee attack, you of course have to be engaged with the model, which has some specific rules in case there are situations where there are a lots of models or just be in line of sight if you need to do a range attack. It doesn't matter the distance, there is no range in that sense. So in this case, this player wants to perform a range attack. So a range attack is determined by your range skill. On the right here of a card, you will see at the top there is the movement, the close combat, the range skill, the strength, the constitution, the leadership, the wounds, and the armor. So the range skill will be a number that you have to roll under. You would take a d20 and simply roll it. And if you roll under the number, your attack successfully hit. If the model was hit, the enemy who got hit will then have to perform an armor test to determine whether or not they suffer a wound from that hit. To perform this test, that player who got hit will look at their reference card for the model that got hit and look at their armor value. The armor value is the bottom number here in the corner and they will have to roll lower than that number. However, that number gets modified depending on the strength of the weapon used in the attack. So let's say here that the predator warrior with the combi stick used their wrist dart. The wrist dart has a strength of 12. That is 2 over 10 and so it will modify the armor value of the enemy by 2 in the opposite direction. So the alien stalker's armor goes from 10 to 8. They will take their dice, roll it. If it passed by rolling equal or less than its armor value modified, then they will not suffer any damage. If it fails by rolling over, it will suffer a wound and possibly be taken out. Once the model has suffered enough wounds equal to its wound threshold, it'll be removed from the board and killed. Fortunately, the alien did not die from this specific attack. Now, some weapons have an ROA value above one. What this means is the rate of attack. If this predator with a combi stick had an ROA greater than one, I could then attack again. In the example where, let's say, I had multiple targets to pick from, I wouldn't have to attack the same target again. I could make my first attack, whether or not it hit or missed, I could then make my second attack and keep going until I've depleted all of my ROA numbers. If when trying to hit a model, you roll a 20, that is a critical failure. Remember, you're trying to roll low numbers here in this game. If you fail by rolling a 20, you cannot make any other actions that turn. So if that was your first action of the round and you had more ROA, you would instead have to forfeit your turn right then and there. If on the opposite side you roll a 1, that is of course a critical pass where the target model cannot make an armor roll to defend themselves and will take the wound. These same rules apply for close combat, but close combat is referring to being engaged. So what does engage mean as a key word? An engaged model is a model that is on an engaged tile. And what is an engaged tile? A tile is an engaged tile if it is occupied by at least two models of opposing factions. So in this situation here, this model would, or this tile would be considered an engaged tile. We have a predator and an alien. It would also be considered an engaged tile if it is adjacent to a fully occupied engaged tile that is occupied by models from at least two different factions. What is occupancy now? That's getting into how many models can be on a singular tile. The answer to that is that each tile has an occupancy limit of eight points. Each small base model 
a 30 millimeters has a value of one occupational point. In each medium, the 40 millimeters has a occupation point value of two. So currently this tile has a current occupancy of two, three, four, five. So if there were three more models here or values of up to three, it would be two, four, five, six, seven, eight, and bam, this tile is fully occupied. So if we had our Predator player positioned like so, this model would be engaged with this tile as well. And he could perform melee attacks into that tile. If however, that tile only had eight occupancy points worth of aliens, these two tiles would not be considered engaged because neither tile is considered engaged itself. You would require two different factions to be on one tile and be fully occupied for it to transfer engagement to its adjacent tiles. We've talked about movement, combat, line of sight, and tiles. So let's get a little bit into detail for how these strategy cards work. Each player will have five at the beginning of each round to use at any point they would like. However, they can only use a maximum of two cards per round. When the players start the game, they will all draw the five cards and they will have the choice of a mulligan. They can discard everything and draw a new hand of five. And they must keep, of course, the second hand. These cards can only be placed between individual model activations, unless specified specifically on the card. These cards can be used on the enemy player's turns. If the player who is, whose turn it is currently wants to use one of their cards, their cards would take precedence first and then the opposing players could throw in their cards. So it could be that the predator player here, if they were the primary player, could place a card on themselves, giving them whatever benefits. And then the alien player afterwards can say, well, I also want to put my card in there which might be a direct counter to what you just put for yourself. But remember, this is between model activations. It's not the same as the sentry action, which is also between ac actions individually, unless of course the card says otherwise. But you simply use the card and then discard it. And then at the beginning of the round, every player will draw back up to five. And if you ever need to draw cards and your deck has been depleted, you will simply reshuffle your discard back into your deck. But the most important thing, of course, is how do you win? I mentioned in the back of the book here, there are different scenarios to pick from. In those scenarios, it'll have some story debriefing as to why each of the factions are in this situation and what they hope to achieve. You can have a multitude of different victory conditions from simple kill everything or kill specific things or do X amount of damage to X team go to X room and do X thing, pick up item, take it back here, etc, etc, etc. There's a good handful of different scenarios and victory conditions in the back of the book. In the advanced rules, I'll also talk about how you can customize your own scenarios and your own maps. Those are the basic rules of the game. Remember, in the next video, I'll be talking specifically about a lot of the specific rules that go into each faction so that you guys can really get a sense of how they play completely differently from one another. But for now, that is the basics of Alien vs Predator. The hunt begins.